when you have leadership meeting, uh, shepherds you are meeting, choir you are meeting, whatever department, you people please underscore that importance and tell the leaders it is extremely important, especially when we have general leadership, for them to be there. I know we had a meeting for leaders, but uh, even that one is very, very important because also all of us, we come together. Uh, please help me to communicate that. Because if you don't attend the meeting, what happens that affects your performance. Yeah, because you will not understand what uh, people are being told, uh, how to improve, whatever needs to be improved. So please uh, note that. The other thing is uh, a choir. I was supposed to meet you today, but at the study uh, there is a crash uh, between uh, our meeting and uh, uh, going to, uh, to Nakuru West. So we will meet next Sunday. Please, all the members of choir, I hope uh, the leaders will help me to communicate with anybody, anybody who is a member of the choir. At uh, that meeting, you cannot miss it. It's very important. And I, don't, I don't have much time. So when I have time with you, please let's make use of it. It's a priority. If just in the case, our meeting next Sunday will crash uh, with the, the shepherd, like I know the shepherd will be meeting. So, but please come to my meeting. <laughs> my meeting is a priority. Okay, if you are a shepherd. And uh, I'll make sure that we finish in time so that you can go to, uh, to, you know, to the shepherd. Our meeting will be 1.30 to 2.30 or somewhere there about. I would like to use about an hour. I'll also be very tired because I'll be ministering next Sunday. Uh, so it will not take a lot of time, but it is very, very important meeting. Uh, you cannot miss. Please make sure that you communicate with the other choir members for next Sunday. One thirty to somewhere two thirty. One hour, one hour appointment with me. Uh, that is very important. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, the other announcement. We are back. <laughs> we are back. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we are back. And Lever Jane, uh, Lever Jane is here. I'm here, and we are back. And uh, we pray. Even as the announcement we were given in the preparation of the ordination, let us cooperate. And uh, when we cooperate, it's very important, you know, especially uh, for the occasion of our pastor, you know, our administrator, our youth pastor. And, uh, we, you know, that occasion will be very important. And because we have done it in the past, I have no doubt you'll do it very well. You'll cooperate, you give money as much as possible uh, so that uh, we will make it that occasion a very memorable occasion uh, yeah one more thing Niku and uh, the place where we are studying I have had a burden a burden because we want to work out on this place here and uh, this place would like to work on it to make it better than what it is I know it's a huge project and uh, Possibly it's not as huge as the entire church, which one day we will do. But uh, we want to start with this place. Uh, we need to make this place more visible uh, so that even when we are taking videos, uh, it will be easier. We don't want lights to be coming this way. We want them to come from the top so that, you know, the entire place is well lit. And they want, uh, it's just, just this area. We, we will work on it. Why am I telling you? I'm telling you this because I do not know. I do not know. There may be somebody who may feel that I would like to do it. I would like uh, to be involved in it. I would like uh, you will just tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. You are the kind of uh, persons I'm looking for uh, because uh, we want to make our stage very nice. I pray. I wish it could be done before the ordination day. Uh, I wish I, we can get uh, uh, the resources that are needed so that we can uh, uh, have it before. <laughs> Excuse me, Miminiki sneeze, even cockroaches really have to flee. <laughs> Mine in Akua very, very, very loud. And I try to control it, but I can't. But some of you are far much better than me. You can control your sneezing. 
But uh, for me, I have. That's something I've been trying for many years and I have not succeeded. And I don't know whether we ever succeed. <laughs> so just bear with me. Yeah. So th that's very important. You know somebody. The reason I'm telling you is so that you may be aware. Because I hear sometimes from time to time, we get people who say, I would like to do something else. You know, like now I was told, uh, there's somebody who said, well, yeah, our entrance door, I want to fix it. And may God bless them. I don't know if, whether it's one or two. Uh, just two people, yeah, they found, well, would like to, the entrance door of the church. We want to buy and fix it. I don't know. I guess they'll be fixed. When is that, Pastor? Next week? Or next week? You know, we'll have a, a new door. And, uh, uh, you know, those persons just said it. If they had asked me, I would have said them, my priority is here. <laughs> it's here. That money I know possibly people say according to their strength or whatever they are planning. But uh, it's good for you to know. Uh, because uh, uh, you may hear somebody saying, well, I would like to do this. I would love to, uh, to be a blessing in that field. So please... Uh, uh, just see me do not start to do something without asking me what I want to be done uh, well the other thing is today is a very important day our presiding bishop is here amen hallelujah amen praise the Lord uh, the presiding bishop of our ministry is here uh, with the reverend Dr. Kadi they are here and uh, you know we don't uh, usually have them uh, and uh, what a blessing to have them, uh, to have them with us this Sunday, and they are going to minister to us. We are so blessed to have you, presiding bishop, to be here. You know, he was uh, ministering to us. You missed the leadership. He was the resource person for the leadership yesterday, and, uh, you know, it was such a blessing to us, and all of us were here. We spent a day. Thank you very much for all of you who came. And thank you for your commitment to watch that. And uh, presiding bishop, uh, thank you for coming and being with us again here at the headquarters. We are blessed to have you. And we pray. Uh, we have, uh, I know we are sharing, we are sharing you with, the, uh, we, we, with the so many congregations in, <laughs> in our ministry. But when you can, uh, we want to come. I think this was not like a, a very official way. I think we'll have a, an, official, an official Sunday to welcome you in, a, in, a, in Nakuru Happy Church when we are ready for you. But we are glad, you know, you accepted to minister for us this Sunday. Amen. Finally, don't miss next Sunday. If you miss next Sunday, you have missed a series I'm going to start and uh, that will help us a lot, especially as we continue. And uh, I have only the coming Sunday for this month. And then, uh, you know, we'll go to April. April will have something else. So please uh, make sure that you come. Number two. The other thing that is very important is, and it's in my heart, and I hope uh, we are announcing it every Sunday. And please hear it from me because it's a priority. I pray you... You do, a, you do a lot of diligence in the outreaching. What do we need to do? Please use your phone. Because I know every one of us, we have a phone. There's somebody you know who doesn't go to church. There's somebody you know who is not even born again. And you can use that connection. And I'm pleading with you because this is what we have. It's our burden for this year. And... Uh, in inviting people to church. You ask is invite the person. You know. We want you to develop a relationship. With that person. Welcome that person to church. Let him or her become a, your guest. You facil facilitate that person to come to, to the church. On a Sunday. You know. And the way to do it is call. You know. Call so and so. Introduce yourself. If you know each other. And uh, be friendly. Be somebody who is doing things with intentionality. In other words, uh, you are doing it consciously. You know what you are doing. You know, tell him or her, I'm inviting you for a very special service 
in our church at Nakuru Happy Church on Sunday, for example. And uh, then, uh, uh, you know, and you tell him, please, I want you to be my guest that is Sunday. And if he, for whatever reasons, oh, next Sunday they cannot work. Uh, you know, uh, okay, let me know next time. Please don't waste the time. Tell him if it doesn't work for you this Sunday, please let's uh, meet next Sunday. And I will remind you, the, you know, in the course of the week. And you do the follow-up using the phone call, you know, calling that person and inviting him to come to church. When we'll be asking on Sunday, this is the way I will gauge the performance. This is the way I will gauge whether you are compliant with what we are saying or what I'm requesting you to do. When I don't find many guests of your norm, these people are not responding. These people are not compliant. If I find there are five guests in my mind and in my calculation, I'll be saying, well, five people, at least five people, have responded to what we are asking them to do. So especially inviting, inviting you as is to invite. If you cannot share with them the gospel for whatever reason and bring them, bring them to church. We know how to share the gospel. We have been doing it for many years. And uh, who knows, God will use us to touch their lives and change their lives. And you have um, a big share in that when you allow that. So please, you know, you hear us announce it every Sunday. And uh, when our leaders forget about it, even you can remind them. You know, because we need to have a passion for it. And uh, Pastor Patrick, I would like this to be on the screen every Sunday. Uh, please put it on the screen in big letters uh, so that the people can be reminded this is what we want to do. In invite people to church. Do your due diligence, you know, to invite. If you have an occasion, like now we're being invited for the ordination and we want to attend and we are preparing ourselves to attend. It is easy to invite. So please make sure you invite. If it will cost you, thank God it will cost you and you say, Lord, I, I am more than willing to help uh, pay the matato fee or whatever fee is needed to make sure this person has come. Let me say this and learn from what is happening in the campaign, in the campaign we are having. See the determination. See the zeal. See the passion. Azimio are having, and what is the other one? Azimio and Okoa Kenya. Is it Okoa Kenya? Yeah. Oh. Kenya Kwanza. Oh man, these names are confusing. I'm not making fun. <laughs> it's that uh, I'm not remembering, you know. Uh, you know, and uh, I know we are representing all those parties here in the church, you know, and uh, it is up to you to belong wherever you belong to. But for me as a minister, I don't belong to any party. And I will never belong to any party, but I, I will vote. You know, I'll vote. But I, I, you can, you'll never see me campaigning for a specific party. Uh, because, you know, we have all those uh, parties in the church. And you're welcome, of course, to support whatever party, whatever candidate you want yourself. But uh, the thing is, as a minister, I don't think uh, uh, that is my area. But there's something I learned in the campaign world. You see the zeal. You see the passion. You see the determination. You see how people are really committed. And I'm sure some of these people, they are using their own resources. They are not possibly funded. Because I find when I watch news, I find them there. They're in Western Kenya. They're in uh, at the coast. They are in the Central. They are wherever. And uh, some of them, we, well, they, I stand to be corrected. They are using their own resources for their candidate. See the passion. See the determination. See the zeal. Well, while the politics is so important for sure, but we cannot compare with the campaign we are talking about. Campaigning for the kingdom. You know, it is, we cannot compare it. You know, campaigning for the kingdom. Using my own resources. Using your own resources. Whatever resources, you know, to, uh, you know, to bring a soul in God's kingdom. Our Lord Jesus Christ had a passion for it. That there is no why he came, you know. And even before he left, 
he had to tell his, uh, his apostles the same. You know, when you read, oh yeah, I want you to go all the whole world. So that the passion, that the go e has not changed with the time. You know, and we need uh, to think about it. Every time I see saws or streams of people uh, walking just past our church, I just say, oh God, what idea? What can I do for these people to get in into the church? What can I do as a person or what can we do as a, as a, 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 as a ministry, you know, to cause these people to get into the church, you know? And uh, I have found it so easy. It is you. You as, you know, in the Bible, we are referred, the members are referred as a flock of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the flock that multiplies. It is not the shepherd. Did you hear what I said? It is the flock that multiplies. It is not the shepherd. So you, you are the people who can cause multiplication. Eh, where were mama? I guess you will not be intimidated calling another mama. Where were kijana? I guess you will not be intimidated calling kijana mwingine. Eh, eh, and where were mze? I guess you will not be intimidated calling another mze. In inviting in inviting, start with the short, uh, you know, with the SMS, follow it with a call, talk with that person, make it your passion to do that. And once you do that, I'm sure the Lord will bless you and it is helping us to advance God's kingdom. Uh, you can hear my passion for it. And uh, I pray you flow with my passion. If you want to be a good friend of mine, flow with my passion. You know, if you want me to give you credit, flow with my passion. And as I already said every Sunday, whether I'm in or away, I'll be inquiring. How many guests are there? When I'm told there were 10, and last Saturday we were five, and we know why, at least the 10 members have done their due diligence to do some invitation. So please uh, take it seriously. Uh, that's my campaign. I've taken time. And, uh, uh, you know, to, to talk about it. Amen. How many have followed what I've said? Uh, and from here, I can't see very well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, tell your neighbor. I can hear the passion of our bishop here. Yeah. Uh, can you hear? I can hear the passion. You can hear the passion. You can hear the passion. Tell the other one. I, uh, I, I hope you have heard the passion. His passion. His passion. I hope you have heard it. Amen. And let's do the due diligence to do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want us to put our hands together, even as we welcome our presiding bishop and uh, Levin Kathy to come here. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. you know, for getting the opportunity to come and uh, Levin K, Dr. Kathy uh, to be with us this Sunday. Uh, we have missed you and we enjoy your ministry. And uh, we thank you for coming, getting time. Uh, this is not uh, the official, you know, coming to Nakuru Happy Church. I'm sure somewhere down the road we will have an official day. Uh, but for now, uh, please uh, just uh, feel at liberty to minister to us. We are hungry. We have come to church hungry to hear the word of God. Let's uh, pray with them in the name of Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory and honor and majesty. Thank you for having a presiding bishop and Reverend Kathy, oh dear Lord God, to come and minister to our lives. Thank you for the message you have given them, oh yes, to deliver to us, to touch our lives. And we thank you, dear Lord God, for the challenge we are going to receive. We thank you for that word that you dwell richly in our heart. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Uh, good morning, everyone. Amen. Buana asifiwe. Jameni mupo. What a blessing to be here today. Um, we are so blessed uh, to be in the headquarters church because the headquarters church praise Jesus has a very very special place 
and very special responsibility in Happy Church. And uh, we can say that this is the, the big mother uh, of all the ministry. And therefore, we are so blessed to be here. I want to thank our parents, our apostolic leader, uh, Bishop uh, uh, Joseph W.W. W. Kamau, and our mom, uh, Leverage Jane, people that we love so much. And uh, particularly in Eldoret Happy Church, we value them and we value their presence there. We always look forward for them to be able to come back. And uh, we were here yesterday. We had uh, quite a long day, an engaging day, as we were talking about um, church planting and its place in our ministry. I want to request my wife to greet you. And uh, I would like us to take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. I want to bless the Lord for this opportunity to be together with us in this place. This is home to me. And uh, we love our parents, mama and daddy there. We love you so much. And I want to thank God that uh, he has given us this opportunity. I thank God for salvation. I thank God even for him keeping me and helping me in this journey to go through. The word of God is key in this. And I thank God that he has given us the word which has become a light to my feet. Buana as if you were sana. Just want, um, as, a, as a, our apostolic leader was talking, and he was talking about this place, um, I just want to say it is possible. And um, just to encourage somebody that um, when, when you beautify the altar, when you beautify the altar, something happens in your heart. When you give yourself to beautify the altar. In Eldoret, Happy Church, the altar was done by the visioners alone. And uh, it, it only took one visioner I not mention who, who just saw the, the vision of doing it, and it was done. And they used close to 700,000 shillings. And you know this place is bigger than there, by the way. It's bigger, almost twice, maybe. And it is possible. It is possible. I'm not saying that the visioners can do it, but I'm saying it is possible we can all do it and beautify our altar. It is beautiful as it is. But it can be better. Bona sefiwe. So I, I think uh, that is a very good thing. And when I come here and see it, and, um, and I think I'll also do something about it when it is being beautified. Because that is also my heart, to see the altar beauty. So I encourage everyone, let's do it. It is possible. Let's do it. Thank you so much. May we be blessed as we receive the word of God. Uh, Sante, uh, we have had quite a busy time. Um, we were in Nairobi, uh, metropolitan uh, region last weekend, where we had gone to give the key of authority uh, to our region overseer of that area, uh, Leverett Bernard Boala. And uh, previously, I had been into our Molo Church, where also we had quite a function that had again to do with the leadership. And um, I want us to uh, really say that we need your prayers. We covet your prayers if you can pray for us because uh, our desire is to see the ministry move to the next level. And uh, we don't just want to grow wide we also want to grow deep. We want to make sure that this growth that is happening is a growth that is God-honoring. And um, I want to congratulate Pastor Patrick for being, uh, you know, qualifying, coming to that place where he qualifies to be ordained. And, um, you know, do to others what you'd like them to do to you. And uh, so please, uh, as you participate in that, 
who knows, you are the one also who will be ordained another day. Maybe to become a pastor, our pastor. Because we have so many places that we have not gone. And we may need even to go to many other countries. And uh, some of you are the ones that will become uh, pastors in those places. So it's very important. Every time you have an opportunity to bless somebody, that is a very, very important time. And there are blessings that can only come to you once. Because if we are talking about ordination and you don't connect, it means that you have missed that opportunity. So I want to say that I'm really also looking forward uh, to be here in July 16 and be able to carry out that ordination. And uh, we bless the Lord. Uh, very soon we are also going to Congo. I'm going with the Bishop of uh, Central Lift. Uh, Bishop James Karanja, we are going to DRC Congo and uh, we covet your prayers again uh, because we are trusting that also we have an opportunity. I don't know whether you know the population of Congo. Congo is one of the most populated countries in Africa and uh, those people are very needy. We pray that the ministry that God has given us uh, is going to cause things to happen and is going to have impact to the people of Congo and, and therefore and Congo is just the beginning we have other places that would like to go if you have been called to ministry I want to tell you you are there in the right place and God is going to work through your life amen allow me now to go to the word of God uh, this morning I want us to read the Bible in the book of uh, Ruth. If you have your Bible in your mobile or you have a physical Bible, go to the book of Ruth uh, chapter 2. The book of Ruth chapter 2. Verse 1. There was a relative of Naomi's husband and not Naomi Gesho. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. Verse 2. So Ruth, the Moabites, said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean ends of grain. After him in whose sight I may find favor, and she said to her, Go, my daughter. Verse 3. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the leapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. Naomi is having a relative of great wealth, and she is, um, she is struggling, she is stuck, she is hopeless. The Bible reports to us a very interesting scenario. I want to share with you on breaking cycles of barrenness. Breaking cycles of barrenness. How can we break cycles of barrenness? Naomi is a widow and Ruth is also a widow they are in a dire state we know the story of the book of Ruth we know how Erimelech took his family from Bethlehem and we know that Bethlehem Bethlehem means the house of bread. So when you say Bethlehem Judah, 
You are saying the house of bread and praise. But there is no provision. A very prophetic town. A house. I mean a town. A place that speaks about God's provision. The provision is not available. And Elimelech took his family to El the land of Moab. Took his family to the land of Moab. Because famine came. Famine happened. And he took a decision. And he went to Moab. And when he went to Moab with his family, the Bible is telling us how the family perished because Naomi is be, be left of a husband and of her two sons. She ends up with two widows and one of them is left behind. But Ruth comes along with a mother-in-law. And she comes to Bethlehem. So we read the story of Ruth in the Bible. That this Ruth, I mean, sorry, this Naomi. Naomi has come to Bethlehem. She is bitter. Her name means pleasant. She tells the people of Bethlehem, do not call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. Because the Lord has been against me. The problems I am having is not because of my pastor. It's not because of anybody. But it's the Lord. I know he is there. But he is not doing anything. I know the Lord can make a difference. But he has chosen to be silent. I know the Lord can transform my life. It can do something about the, the, the current situation. But he has chosen not to do it. So don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara because the Lord has been against me. And this woman is bitter. When you are barren, you become bitter. When you are barren, you become frustrated. When you are barren, nothing. You don't see joy. Because you are lacking something in your life. But this year, this year, the year of double portion is the year of productivity. And we need to purpose in our lives. We must break every cycle of barrenness in our life. We must break through. We must come out. And the Bible says, this Naomi who is bitter with God is having a relative. And this relative is a wealthy man. A, a man of great wealth. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. This year 2022, you are going to meet your boys. When you meet your boys, your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Every answer that Naomi needed, every answer that Ruth needed, was going to come from Boaz. I pray this year is the year you will meet with your Boaz. Boaz means strength. Boaz means strength. When you read the book of Kings, First Kings, the story of Solomon, there were two pillars to the temple. Two pillars to the temple entrance. One pillar is Jachin. The other pillar is Boaz. The pillar of Jachin means establishment. 
The pillar of Boaz means strength. Every time you come to the presence of God, you are entering to a place of establishment. You are entering to a place of strength. You came through that door weak, you will go out stronger. You came through that door disadvantaged, you will go out advantaged. You came that door with a certain burdens, you will go home lighter. Because there is Jehovah in this altar. Because God is at work in this place. So the Bible is reporting. And the Bible is saying, Ruth, I mean, it's saying there is a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. Hallelujah. So Ruth, the Moabites, her man. The Bible is, I love my Bible. Ruth, the Moabite is. You know, she's being described. Who is this Ruth? Ruth is, is not coming from the right place. Ruth is coming from the wrong place. Ruth is a Moabites. And Ruth is cursed. But I, am, I want you to know today, by the end of this preaching, I want to convince you, you are a cursed destroyer in your family. Can you say, I am a cursed destroyer? In my family. The curse of the Moabites. Is not the kind of curse. That you have. This was a very serious curse. The Moabites. The Bible is telling us. Ruth. The Moabites. Is in a cycle. A cycle. Of barrenness. A cycle of. Of frustration. A cycle of widowhood. The Moabites. Were a product. Of a widow. Because when Lot. Went to talk to his sons in law. They refused to go out of Sodom. May God give you sons in law that are not citizens of Sodom. That are coming from the house of God. Because the daughters of Lord, praise Jesus, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise Jesus. Lord is a righteous man and he is vexed. Because he put his tent in Sodom. And his daughters. Hey, his daughters. They were married. Because the Bible says. The angels told Lord. Tell you our sons in law. This city is at a judgment. Fire and brimstone sky is falling. Tell them to park and go. Leave this city without turning back. But when Lord talked to them, they refused to come out. So they were destroyed. So the Moabite, Moabites are a product of incest. But at the same time, this, the mother of the Moabites is a widow. So when you read Deuteronomy 23 verse 3 there is a very serious curse that is spoken against the Moabites. The Bible is saying no Moabite will enter the assembly of the Lord up to the 10th generation. Not four generations. Very serious curse. 
And actually, the scripture finishes by saying forever. You might be here, you are feeling cut off. You might be here, you think there is a curse in your family. That is terrible. The Bible is recording a story here for us about a woman called Ruth. And this Ruth is a Moabitess. She is coming from a background that is cursed. She is coming from a background that is hopeless. But I want you to know, Ruth is about to break out of this. Ruth is about to become a mother in the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know, you can break out of every cycle that the enemy has forced upon your life. And you can come out victorious. And you can come out with power. And you can bring glory to Jehovah. If you believe it, say yes. So Ruth, the Moabites, said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean hands of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. And they said to her, Go, my daughter. Now, Ruth, praise Jesus, praise the Lord. There are about three things how Ruth broke through out of this cycle. One of them is divine providence. Can you say divine providence? God is at work in your life. It doesn't matter even you may have made mistakes. But God is able to orchestrate and order things in your life. So that you come out of that defeat. You come out of that darkness. You come out of that hole. And bring glory to him. Number two. The other number two. How Ruth broke through. His identity. When she met Naomi. I mean she met Boaz. Something happened. And number three. Is consecration. Number three is consecration. Back to the story. Ruth tells her mother-in-law, let me go to the field and green hands of grain. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So divine providence, change of identity and consecration. In the Bible, in the ancient world, God instructed the children of Israel how to harvest. Praise Jesus. God instructed the children of Israel how to harvest. You don't harvest any howdy. There are people who harvest and they don't follow God's procedure. And when you don't follow God's procedure, you have harvest instead of increasing and it keeps going down, reducing. So, according to the word of God, when God Cost you are filled to produce. The first thing you do is when the most healthy crop matures. My wife is not a joke. She is a BT, BT cotton farmer. My wife. You see her there? She's a farmer. Praise Jesus. BT Cotton Farmer. That's serious. So when we went home, 
we discovered some of the cotton has started flowering. And the other one is still down because of the situation in our place. We had more rain than we needed. So even if you do wheat or barley, there is a crop that comes out fast and it is strong. According to the word of God, that makes the first fruit. That is what you go and correct and you bring to the altar. You come and wave it and the priest will declare blessings upon your farm. You go back. You wait for the other club to mature. When it matures and you go to harvest, the Bible says in Leviticus 19 verse 9, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field, nor shall you gather the greenings of your harvest. Last part B of verse 10. You shall leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord, your God. So, when you go to harvest, you will leave the corners and harvest it. It doesn't matter how the club in the corners looks attractive. But if this field is your assignment and project with God, you leave the corners and you leave the corners for the poor. You leave the corners for the strangers. You leave the corners for the orphans. So, in the Bible, that is called greening. Greening. So when you have harvested, you will take 10% of your harvest and give to God. But you leave the corners unharvested. When God gives you your salary in Inawasco, it has corners. When God gives you your salary in TSC, it has corners. When you get profit out of your business, it has corners. And those corners, you help people. Some of them can be your relatives who are drunkards. Some of them can be people in your village who will never tell you thank you. But you are touching their lives. You are making a difference. You don't buy new clothes with the corners. There are people in the church. They eat everything. They eat what belongs to God. They eat the corners. They eat everything. And then they have constipation. They have resources. They have money. They have this and the other. Lakini wanaandamwa na kila shinda. Because they never took time to understand the Bible principle. Jesus said, the poor will be with you always. So you must never forget them. Every Saturday at Abbey Church Eldoret, we feed the street kids. And these days they are increasing like nobody's business. The last time I asked, I think they were 80 to 90. We give them chapati, we give them meat. Some of them come with their little babies there. Families, I'm telling you. Sometimes we give them clothes, they go and sell. But we'll never stop giving them. We'll never stop feeding them. So Ruth 
is is saying I want to go allow me to go praise Jesus allow me to go to the field of Umuheva I will find favor and I will go and green there I'll go and green there I'll go and take what was left behind but a promotion is about to happen. Allow me to say this. Some of us, we have been greening in the field of Boas. But the year 2022, the year of double portion, you are moving from greening to gathering. You are moving from a greener in the kingdom to a place of plenty. This is a year of promotion. This is a year of supernatural harvest. This is a year of going to the next level. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I pray in the name of Jesus, let the circle of barrenness in your life be destroyed. We refuse this circle. The circle of luck. The circle of few members. We refuse it in the name of Jesus. We refuse it in the name of Jesus. Rama kasete leba kazaya. Rima shende bekisa tabakayata. This is God's kingdom. This is not our kingdom. This is God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a mighty hand. We have been grinning long enough. Now it is time we gather. <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs> and you know, Boaz, Boaz, if you read this, this story, it is a very interesting story. When I was reading it, I've never heard anybody really preach so much from it, but the Lord was showing me how rich this text is and uh, and and it, it's a blessing to my heart and the ruth at some point is told that the 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 the, 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 the reapers are told leave her to to harvest from some of the sheep leave her leave her so you may have enjoyed harvesting from you know some 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 reasonable blessing of some kind but God has more for you. And in this year, we are breaking through every barrier. We are going to the other side. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ruth chapter 3. Then, Naomi, a mother-in-law. Hallelujah. Naomi, a mother-in-law. This is a very serious mother-in-law. A mother-in-law must not be like charity of Citizen TV. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. My wife is a mother-in-law. Did you know that? Praise Jesus. Buona sifiwe. A mother-in-law that can enhance the ministry of a daughter-in-law. A mother-in-law that, that can open doors for a daughter-in-law. A mother-in-law that, that values this connection. Praise Jesus. This mother-in-law is about to be used. May you be used. How many mother-in-laws do you have in the house? You are a mother-in-law and you are seated there. Just wave at me. You are a great mother-in-law. May the Lord bless you. And may you not spoil your glad children so much. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Then Naomi, a mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, Shall I not seek security or rest for you? 
That is chapter 3, verse 1. That it may be well with you. Now, Boaz, whose young men, young women, you are with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is with knowing Barry tonight at the threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Praise Jesus. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in and cover his feet and he lie down and he will tell you what you should do and she said to her all that you, have, you, you say to me I will do so she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother in law instructed her verse 7 and after Boaz and eaten and drunk and his heart was cheerful, he went, to his, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. And she came uh, softly and covered his feet and lay down. Now it happened at midnight that the man was startled and turned himself. And there a woman was lying at his feet. And he said, who are you? So she answered, I am Ruth, your maid servant. Take your maid servant under your wing. For you are a cross relative. Something is about to happen. Ruth is about to break out of a cycle of limitation. Ruth is about to break out of a cycle of barrenness, of isolation, of frustration, and lack of joy. She is about to come out of a widowhood. So the mother-in-law tells Ruth, wash yourself. Hallelujah. Wash yourself. You don't meet your boss the way you meet other people. You, there is a procedure. The house of God is, is, is a, a sacred place. You don't just operate here the way you operate in your kiosk. The way you operate in that office. No. There is order in the house of God. Ruth wants to break through. And the Bible tells us the mother-in-law tells Ruth you're going to have a shower. You're going to wash yourself for the purpose. For this reason, the person you're going to meet, every blessing that you want to reach to requires a new consecration. I don't know what you desire. You want God to use you, my tree. But it requires a higher consecration. There are people in Kenya. Their consecration is so low. Yet they want everything from God. That is why people manipulate others in Nairobi. And other cities and on TV. Because this person is not willing to pay the price. When God wanted to promote Abraham. Abraham, I'm thinking good things 
about you. But the level I want you to go requires you to bring Isaac and you sacrifice him on the mountain that I'll show you. And when Abraham took Isaac to Mount Moriah, the location of the temple of Solomon, when Abraham put Isaac on the altar, that's when he heard the voice of the father saying, now I know Abraham, you're ready for the other blessing. I pray that in this year, your consecration is going to increase. I pray that in this year, you're not going to remain at the same point. Mama tells Ruth, you're going to bathe, you're going to wash. When Ruth went to the shower, she was not showering to go to the street. She was showering saying, I want to meet my boas and I pray for you that you may meet your boas this year. May this year be the year of your breakthrough. May the year this year be the year of your elevation. May this year be the year God is going to transform everything about you. Rika mazeke leba kosa. Ruth go and bathe. Ruth go and wash. There are things you must remove out of your life. Some things come through this little gadget. There are people who are hooked here. They forget their spouses because of this. They forget prayer because of this. They remember this more than more than their children. Some of us if we switched off this phone and kept it in the drawer for one week by the following week our breakthrough will be with us. If you are clapping, clap for Jesus. There are things that are not seen. They are not necessarily seen. See, Dambi? But here, Kitu Mebeba, it will never allow you to move to the next level. As long as Abraham was with the Lord, there was a place he would never reach. And that's why God had to help Abraham. And Abraham told Lot, if you go right, I go left. If you go left, I go right. But one thing is clear. I need a higher consecration. I need to move to the next level. As I finish. As I finish. The identity of Ruth is about to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The identity, she is no longer going to be Ruth the Moabites. She is going to be Mrs. Boaz. Ruth of Boaz. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So she is taught. Go to the threshing floor. Go to the threshing floor. The threshing floor. It's a place of separation. The threshing floor is a place of separation. When there was plague in the days of King David, the angel of death stopped at the threshing floor. The threshing floor is a place of separation. The threshing floor is a place of prayer. Ruth is taught. Go there. Go there. And you're going to go there according to order and instruction. Don't go there and bring excitement. Don't, don't go there and bring false fire there. No. Don't go there and try to impress everybody. 
You are only going to bless one per, impress one person. His name is Boaz. And when you go to the threshing floor, mark where Boaz has slept. Mark where he is. You will not talk to him unless he has talked to you. There's something that's going to happen. When you go there, go and lie down. Ruth, go and lie down. Lie down at the feet. Not at the head. But at the feet. Lie there. People who lie at his feet, they will get his attention. He will talk to you. He will talk to you. Praise Jesus. <laughs> I'm finishing. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you lie down there, when you lie down there, <laughs> when you lie down there, at the feet, at the feet, at the feet, he will ask you, what is it? What is it that you want? You will tell him, cast your wing, cast your garment, allow your servant, your maid servant. The Bible says in Ezekiel 16 verse 8, when I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed, your time was the time of love. So I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Ruth, when he talks to you, tell him, spread, spread, spread your garment, spread your wing over your servant. Spread your wing over your servant. Lying at the feet means total submission. Means total submission. Jesus requires total submission. As you come this year of double portion, this year is a year of double portion. It means the number of twos will never be repeated again. Maybe in your lifetime. The tools that you are having this year will never be repeated again. This year, this year, this year, this year, this year, this year, this year. Praise Jesus. It's a year that God will cover your nakedness. It's the year that God will cover your nakedness. It's the year for God's glory. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Presiding Bishop, thank you very much for the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope all of us we were ministering to. Amen. From a gleaner to a gatherer. Uh, from gleaning to gathering. You know, uh, that statement has touched me as a bishop was uh, sharing. From gleaning to gathering. That it means uh, from what is little to abundance. From little to abundance. Yeah, you know, I'm sure some of you, I don't know whether you have uh, had the experience of gleaning. Um, 
if you went to places like uh, where they grow rice, especially in Mwea, uh, you can see that uh, practically you find where they have harvested. There are some other persons who come and usually I see ladies that will go picking the stems that have some grains, you know, from what was left when the gathering, when the machine went through the field and they will gather and they finally separate the grains from the chaff and before too long, these gleaners, they have something substantial, you know, and uh, when I see it, I just remember the book of Ruth, you know, and even I guess also where people are growing wheat, you find some people who go around, they are gleaning, or even where we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, we have maize, if it's a huge field after people have harvested, although sometimes I don't find a lot of maize kind of uh, being left behind, but you can get, a, you know, something behind. That's gleaning, as a bishop was telling me that. And the Lord will cause us to move from being a gleaner to a gatherer. Oh man, a powerful statement. Yeah, instead of, you know, gleaning, you're gleaning whatever is available, but now the Lord says, I'm giving you so much abundance. So now it's to gather. You are gathering when you talk about gathering, it is where there is plenty, you know, but when you're talking about gleaning, there is little. It's the Lord taking us from the level of uh, little resources to higher, you know, to higher level where now we have God's favor and we can, uh, we can become gatherers. And uh, gatherers of material things, gatherers of spiritual things and uh, all we need to do is to position ourselves amen uh, you know it's a very very fascinating story when we read the you know the book of Ruth for sure thank you bishop for that word and may God help us let's pray together our heavenly father we thank you we bless your mighty holy name for the word we have received this morning thank you dear lord god you want us to take you want us to take us uh, from the cycles cycles of neg negativity cycles of little cycles of tragedy cycles of misery and you move to to the cycle Oh, dear Lord God of abundance of your favor and your goodness upon our lives. We bless your name and glorify you and exhort you. Thank you, dear Lord God, because all of us, we have to move in the direction because your favor is upon us in this year of double, double blessing. Oh, dear Lord God, may you minister to every one of us. May let none be left behind. Oh, dear Lord God, during this season. Oh, yes, Lord, uh, continue touching our lives. Uh, continue, dear Lord God, you provoking us. Oh, yes, to become what you want us to be. Holy Spirit, take over in our lives. Take over in every person's life. In the mighty name of the King of glory, we refuse the past to haunt us. We refuse the past uh, to keep on holding us captives. But now we move in the direction of God, in the direction of favor, in the direction of divine providence, in the mighty name of the King of glory. And our lives will never be the same again. Thank you, dear Lord God, even for what you have done for us. Oh yes, so far. And we are looking forward in for great things, for great visitation, even the coming months of this year of 2022. Take over in every person's life in the mighty name of the King of glory. Take over, dear Lord God, break every chain and every fetter. Oh, dear Lord God, that may cause us not to be, not to flow. Yes, according to a plan. In the mighty name of Jesus, we refuse the cycles, those cycles, those cycles of, of uh, the cycles of, uh, of need. Oh, yes, those cycles of bondage, cycles of frustration, cycles of poverty, 
cycles that cause us to be miserable and we move in your direction, in your favor, our feet. Oh yes, dear Lord God, you walk in your ways, in your favor, in the mighty name of the King of glory. I prophesy we will never be the same again. I prophesy our season is changing in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy all those negative cycles, oh yes, we will not have effect upon our lives, upon our family, upon our ministry, in the mighty name of the King of glory. And we are getting to a new season, a new season we will rejoice over later, a new season of gratefulness, of gratitude, of saying, yes, Lord, finally, lastly, you have remembered me, you have visited me as an individual, you have visited me as a family person, you have visited my family. You have visited me in the ministry. I bless your name and glorify you and exhort you. We thank you, Lord, and we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's give our Lord a mighty, mighty hand clap. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. From uh, negative cycles to positive cycles. Amen. Praise the Lord. From being gleaners to gatherers. Can you say from being gleaners to gatherers? Yeah. You are going to gather. You are going to be blessed. The Lord will provide for you. There is the divine providence. I agree. I agree with our bishop. You know what he, he is saying to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody who may be in this assembly this morning and you are not born again? You are not born again for some reason, you know, and you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just lift up your hand and we are more than willing to pray with you. Amen. Are you there? We want to give you an opportunity to have a relationship with the Almighty God. We give you an opportunity to be restored. We give you an opportunity to be blessed, to be favored. It is all about choice. The choice you make. There are consequences. What, do you, what choice do you make? I pray you become wise and make a wise decision. Uh, anybody, before we conclude the service. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word we have heard. May that word continue dwelling richly and stalling our spirits and causing us to flow in the direction of your favor. May you be glorified. May you be exalted. We thank you, dear Lord God, for our lives. We thank you for what you are doing and what even you do. We bless your name and glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We thank you even for our presiding bishop and dear Lord God, even for the work ahead of him and the ministry. We pray, dear Lord God, uh, even as he prepares and uh, to to move to Congo in the next couple of couple of weeks. Oh, dear Lord God, how we pray you'll be with him, you'll be with them, dear Lord God, your anointing will even overtake them and will go before them in the mighty name of Jesus. And you use them mightily even when go to DLC Congo in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And dear Lord God, may your divine hand, oh yes, continue to protect them, to secure them under your wings in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We want to give our offerings to the Lord. We, you know, I want you to know offerings are very important. And we have uh, a pay bill.